Good morning, Word of Life Church. Our devotional for today is taken from Psalm chapter 42, verses 5 and 6. The Word of God says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior, and then verse 6, and my God. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, how we praise you and we thank you, Lord. For in this time of calamity, in this time of plague, the coronavirus pandemic, we are so disturbed, we are so disquieted within us. We are fearful for our families, for our businesses, for our children, what the future holds. So Lord, help, help us. Encourage us, inspire us, O Lord, in this time that we are disquieted, that we are disturbed inside of us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of us are already depressed after five months of quarantine? When Gwen Garcia, the governor, announced that all schools in the island of Cebu will be closed effective March 15. I was so disturbed because you know March 16, 17, 18 was our schedule of final exam in our school and that is our only chance to collect the, the payables but it was not materialized. The school year ends and we miss one season of collection and now in this pandemic we are affected we're just a small school and the enrollees went down almost half and the good thing is that god is still good god is still sovereign god is still in control there are so many Christians that, may, that might experience depression after five months of quarantine. No jobs, no income, businesses are down, some goes bankrupt. And so these words from, the, from God are so comforting to us. There are also people in the Old Testament who suffered depression. One, Elijah. After the victorious showdown with the 450 prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel, only one woman threatened to end his life. And Elijah became depressed. Instead of feeling victorious after killing the 450 false prophets of Baal, Elijah is now hopeless. He felt alone and afraid. He had low self-esteem and wanted to die. Elijah, a prophet, a hero, a person of faith, underwent severe depression. And you know the effects of depression? Thoughts of self-harm, overeating, oversleeping, over watching its bio and Netflix, Netflix movies, which I call optical or visual tripping, or some of us may be on Facebook bench, scrutinizing the private lives of other people and counting how many likes they got for every post. There's also another person who got depressed, aside from Elijah. Moses in Numbers 11.15 After being so overwhelmed with stiff neck, complaining, disobedient people, they are always going to Moses with not just their own daily problems, bickerings among themselves, but they are hitting on God. They will keep on, they keep on complaining. Mana again? Where is the meat? It would be better for us to have gone back to Egypt 
with all the melons, the fruits, the fish, the meat. And so Moses was so depressed. How could, how could he deal with such people? And then he asked God. He prayed to God. He said, put me to death or else I will kill myself. And Elijah himself asked, Lord, enough of this. Take my life because I am just as sinful as my ancestors. And there's still one more character who was asking God to end his life. Jonah in chapter 4 verse 3. He said, Now, O Lord, take away my life for it is better for me to die than to live. But on Jonah's case, it was a different matter. He hated the Ninevites. And now the hatred against the Ninevites was now transferred to God. He said, kill me out of hatred. Because he cannot tackle that God can forgive this sinful, this cruel people. What about us this time? Brothers, it's normal to be depressed. It's normal to be disquieted. But praise God, we have the antidote. In Elijah's depression, it was the still whisper of hope. And God commissioned Elijah to search for a team. Anoint these two persons to become kings of the, the king of Aram and king of Israel. Anoint Elijah, Elijah to be your successor prophet. God was still commissioning Elijah despite the depression. And Moses, the antidote for depression, still the word of God. Moses finds 70 more leaders so that I can transfer the spirit from you. I will also multiply it to 70 more people to help you lead this stubborn, stiff-necked people. So it's the word of God that brings comfort to this depressed prophet, Elijah, Moses. And also with Jonah. Jonah, are you concerned with a shrub that was just grown overnight and after a day it died? How much more for me, Jonah? There are 350,000 people who does not know their left and the right foot and there are still animals in Nineveh should I take more concern and care for them you know it's the word of God that is the perfect antidote of depression of this disquieted heart this disturbed soul within us in Hebrew the word soul why are you so downcast the soul means nephes. Nephes is the element in humans that brings life. It refers to our feelings, our thought, our action or decision. And this is separate and distinct entity aside from our body. It seems that our body is like this shirt. And the one that will bring life, that will make this shirt moving, is the soul that is within us. Through our soul, we can appreciate beauty. We can analyze what we saw, what we hear. We can synthesize, we can argue, we can decide because we have the soul. And so this war between the feelings and what is really the truth is concentrated here in this verse. This, why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? It refers now to the feeling. Downcast means sad, a feeling of being sad, gloomy, blue, low, grim, depressed, or melancholic. And disturbed. Why are you so disturbed within me? It's also a feeling. The feeling of being anxious, worried, fearful, apprehensive, restless, turbulent, and stormy without peace or even struggling inside of us those are feelings 
The antidote of these feelings is the fact. What is the truth? The truth is we can still hope in God. We can still praise Him because God is our Savior. He is our God. Very good words to cling to, to anchor our faith. Hope in Hebrew is Yahal. Put your hope in God. That means your being is now commanding your feelings. You are some sort of scrutinizing yourself. You are doing some sort of self-introspection. You are going to challenge yourself. You are feeling that way. Put your hope in God, oh my soul. You so it means that you are commanding your feelings to anchor on the fact, to anchor on the on the truth that we can hope in God. So Yahal in Hebrew, the Hebrew word for hope is to wait, to put hope in, and to expect. Of course, we can expect great and mighty things from God. He promised that. He said, call unto me and I will show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Things that are beyond our expectations. I don't expect that in this coronavirus that affects the school that my wife operates, instantly we are now offering online teaching, distance learning. And I said, oh, it seems that a Parkey Christian school is a small school, it's just like UP. UP has their own open university, distance learning, La Salle University and Ateneo University are offering also online courses just like Liberty University in the US. I don't expect that this small school can do the same thing. So it's it's some sort of marvelous to me and I praise God, Lord, thank you that we still have an alternative to continue the ministry of winning the small minds to the Lord. And their parents are sitting beside them while they're being taught by our teachers online. And the, because the parents are guiding their children to open what page instead of our assistant teachers, praise the Lord, it's now the parents who are there. So every prayer that the teacher will lead or will say before and after classes, the parents are there listening to our teachers. It's marvelous and wonderful things that happen in this coronavirus pandemic. And I know that God can still do great and mighty things in you, in your family, in your situation. Fact versus feeling. The fact is the antidote of our low feelings, depressed feeling, bad feelings, because the fact is the truth. It is like a bedrock. It is like an anchor. It is unchangeable. Our faith in God is valid. Is We can hope in a God who holds our faith for us. Faith is a gift. We can ask God increase my faith in this pandemic. Lord, I believe in you, but help my unbelief. Because we serve an unchanging and unchallenged God. Coronavirus, molecules flying on air is invisible. But we have an invisible God who is over, above this pandemic. He is still in control. We can hope in God. We are assured that this calamity will result in the praising and glorifying God. Because what this fact is said, put your hope in God for I will yet praise Him. So in the future, I can still praise God that this problem will be solved. We do not know. By December, this virus will pass over this planet and probably I should say, I would like to imagine, it will transfer to Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, but it has already passed over planet Earth. That I would like to see that way. I will yet praise Him my Savior and my God. You know, if we are fully convinced or fully persuaded that God is our Savior, 
He alone can save us in this pandemic. He alone can protect us. We cannot protect our children. We cannot protect our families. We cannot protect our businesses. Only God can protect us from bankruptcy. Only God can provide us with customers, with clients, with, with sufficient income or food and clothing and, and water and everything that we need because the Lord is our shepherd and we have everything that we need. We should be assured that God is our Savior and He is a loving Savior and He loves us. That's why He is present in this situation and He gave us a promise that He is willing to fulfill. A very common promise that I can offer you this morning. Just this promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, there are 85 to 100 verses in the entire Bible that is of the same meaning, of the same insight that God is here with us, that God will not abandon us, that God loves us so much that He will never cast us, cast us out from His presence. In, in fact, He longed for us to be with Him. That's why if we go back to the first verse of this chapter 42, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. We have a God who is alive, invisible, yet thinking, acting, feeling, deciding God for our best benefit, for our best interest. Even this pandemic, this coronavirus that has ha run havoc throughout the world can do, can work for our best. Romans 8.32 I'd like to verify What then shall we say in response to this, in this pandemic? If God is for us, who can be against us? We don't know our enemy. This virus is invisible in our naked eye. But even if we cannot see them, God can say to them, be still, peace. A good illustration was in Mark chapter 4, verse 39. Jesus Christ was asleep, they were in a boat, there was a squall, or a Yolanda Galilean version. And these fishermen disciples were so afraid. They were so familiar with the sea. But this time this is an unusual upsurge. This is a big storm. That's why I call it Yolanda Galilean version. And they said, Master, out of fear, disturbed, disquieted spirit, so worried and anxious, they will say, don't you care that we will die? Imagine Jesus Christ who is the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sake of the sheep. is already now being accused. Don't you dare? You do not care. We are about to die. And Jesus Christ rose from his sleep and then he just fell. Peace, be still. And that words has enough power that all these millions of molecules of air that was moving, wind is a moving air. And it has impacted on the surface of the lake that it brings turbulent waves. And so the molecules of air and the water said, it's the master, it's the master. 
telling one wave to the other. It's the master and all of the waves and the wind were flat, obeying the commands of the supreme being. And it resulted in amazement and fear, the reverential fear. Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Jesus Christ commanded these brainless molecules of air and wind to stop moving. And they obeyed. How much more for us thinking, acting, feeling human beings? There is also another command by God for human beings. Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. People are quarreling. Nations against nations. Kingdoms against kingdoms. And then God came to intervene. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted above the earth. It was a command to the people. If the wind and the waves obey God, His command to be still, they do not have brain, they do not have heart. This coronavirus can easily be stilled by God. How much more for us human beings? We can analyze, we can think, we can synthesize. We can conclude that God indeed is good. We must obey God. We should be still in this situation. He said, Know that I am God. I am supreme. I am almighty. I am the El Elyon. That means He rules over the kingdoms of men. And the good thing is that only this peace can be experienced by those people who have Jesus Christ inside of them. When God is ruling over your mind, your hearts, and your soul, you can experience stillness, peace. You will be saved from worry and anxiety. It's okay to be worried. It's okay to be anxious. But just remember, there is God. We can still hope in Him. We can choose to praise Him despite the death, despite the destruction, despite the, the effects of this coronavirus quarantine. It's so uncomfortable. You are being kept in your house for how many months? Businesses, no customers. You cannot go to one barangay to another. We have a friend there from Samar who is there in Barangay Capital. He wants to go to Barangay Log, but he is not yet allowed until this time. So there is really a lot of discomfort. This is a lot of troubles going on outside of us. But we pray, Word of Life Church, that it will not affect the serenity inside of us. In worries, anxiety, trouble, God has a promise. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, let your request be made known to God. With thanksgiving, and the result is, and the peace of God shall keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And let's proceed with Philippians 4 8. This is now the truth. Therefore, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, let your mind be focused, ponder on these things. And what is that that exactly fit with all of these adjectives, with all of this description, except God and His Word? We should be like Moses and Elijah, that in the moment of depression, only the Word of God can bring stability to them. God told Elijah, Go, Elijah, where you came from. Anoint Jehu as king of Israel. Anoint this man as king of Aram. Anoint Elijah to be your successor prophet. And then Moses was so depressed. Kill me. 
I cannot handle these stubborn, stiff-necked people. And then the word of God came. Moses, bring me 70 of your leaders. It is still the word of God. The word of God, the powerful words of Jesus Christ, just two words, be still. Peace, be still to this mindless, brainless wind and water and be obeyed. Another powerful word of God. Be still and know that I am God. Even the resurrection of Lazarus, just three words. Lazarus, come out. And then when that word Lazarus reached the ears of Lazarus, all of those tissues, cells, and everything, the nerves are already dead and non-functioning. The brain stops sending electrical waves. The heart starts pump, stops pumping. And then the lungs no longer moving, but just the simple word, Lazarus. And then that word speaks to the ears and it awakens the nerves and the cells and it penetrates to the brain. And the brain starts sending electrical impulses again. And then the heart starts pumping again. And then the lungs of Lazarus starts to, to receive oxygen. That's the power of God's word. That's why if we are depressed we are confused we will go back to god's word word of life how i pray and i wish that in this season of confusion we are depressed we will go back to the word of god we will leave out our name word of life how many promises of god have been memorized while being quarantined this is the time. God is now polishing us, is now training us to become Mary. The Martha days are done. Activity here and there, going, traveling, partying, meetings, conferences, and other usual things that we did. Just like Martha, so active. Action time is over. Quarantine time is for contemplation. We are now like Mary. We should sit at the feet of Jesus, listening to the words. This is the time that we should be contemplative, no longer active. Think, ponder on God's word, and then listen to what God will use. How could we be used by God? What are the intentions of God for us? after the pandemic i am pretty sure my brothers at word of life church that when this pandemic will pass over our country will pass over this planet god will be exalted god will be praised god will be lifted up because god deserves to be glorified god deserves our praise this problem will result to praising god let's pray Lord God,